Hi, I'm Ramsey Batesel, and I'm joined here with Paige Castellan. Uh, Paige, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I um, am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Um, I studied electrical engineering at Virginia Tech, and after graduating, I thought I would have a pretty normal career, but that is not what happened at all. I had the opportunity of a lifetime to work as an electrical engineer on the world's first solar powered airplane to fly around the world. That was called Solar Impulse 2. And then after that, I continued working um, with the same company that I worked with on Solar Impulse 2. Um, it's a material science company called Covestro. And I helped them build their North American strategy for the future of mobility. So that's things like vehicles. So the first four years of my career, I really learned and um, dove into a lot of cool things in the realm of the future of mobility. Wow, okay. So uh, about Solar Impulse 2, uh, if I remember correctly, you were the youngest uh, ground crew member on the entire team. What was it like being uh, so young amongst all the other people? <laughs> It was, was it intimidating? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, it definitely was a little intimidating. And I think um, one thing that I learned from the experience is having a strong support system is so important. So if it's your family, if it's your friends, if it's your teammates, having people around you telling you that you can do it makes it so much easier when you're, um, you know, if you would fail, they're there to pick you back up. So um, I was so glad, though, to have that opportunity so early on in my career, because I think a lot of times growing up, you think, oh, I have to wait until I've been working for 20, 30, 40 years before I can do anything cool. And it really showed me that, you know, I could jump in and in my early 20s, right after college, I can, I can do something pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's, I think, quite important because there are a lot of people out there who think they need uh, many, many years of experience. And um, I think your story is a very interesting case and it shows how uh, you don't need so many years, you just need the knowledge, right? Is mm -hmm. there anything else you'd like to add on to that? Or I think um, the other thing I was talking about with the support system, I think a lot of times maybe really before I took on this opportunity and applied for the job um, to work with Solar Impulse, I, um, you know, a lot of people asked me, do you think you can do this? Are you ready for something like this? Aren't you scared? And I think, of course, you know, I was scared and I was nervous that I wasn't ready, but, you know, any fears that I had of jumping on and trying this new project were totally um, outweighed by how awesome it would have been, right? You know, if you yeah. have an experience like that, don't question yourself and say, am I ready? Just say, you know, I'm going to find out how can I become ready if I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is something I'm personally curious about, but when you joined the team, uh, did you, uh, for one, did you get along with the members? And two, did you see any of the members as sort of role models that you could look up to and follow? Yeah, I, um, I definitely um, got along with the team a lot. And I think one of the things when you're living and working together with people 24 seven, you really become a family. Um, I was just, even though the project ended four years ago, which is crazy, I was just talking to a few of the people yesterday and the team is global. So I was talking to my friend that lives in Abu Dhabi and in India and Switzerland. And, you know, I think um, one of the things too is just going into any experience open-minded. I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to know everything and being able to learn from great electricians engineers that were doing something completely different from anything I thought I could do. Um, yeah, it was a great experience. Electrical engineer, uh, when you sent, when the plane actually took off, uh, were you there to watch its maiden flight? And how did that feel? So the way Solar Impulse worked, um, since I was a member of the ground crew, I was responsible for the handling of the airplane. And it's very different than any other airplane um, I had ever seen. <laughs> and one of the things I had to do was um, either pull the airplane onto the runway 
Um, it weighed 5,100 pounds, which is um, about the size of a normal SUV for anybody that's using different, um, you know, kilograms or something. But yeah, just like the size of a car. But the wingspan was huge, and it was the size of maybe two basketball courts side by side. Um, so it's this massive plane, and I would have to do things like pull it out onto the runway or hold up the wing um, to make sure if the wind came, it didn't tilt from side to side. Um, I had to do a lot of different things that I never expected doing. And the plane would um, go from location to location. So we stopped in a lot of different places um, around the United States. We were in Spain. I was in Egypt with the plane, Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates. Um, so yeah, I was there for a lot of the takeoffs and landings. It wasn't just one um, flight. Yeah, uh, I did hear about how so oh, um, it went all across the world and had many stops. Uh, what was it like when you encountered those? Uh, what I read online was you had battery issues at a certain point uh, that grounded the plane for quite a long time. How did that feel? Yeah, so I actually, um, I came on for the second half of the project. So mm. the plane was going, um, starting in Abu Dhabi, and then it went across Asia. And from the flight from um, Japan to Hawaii in the United States, um, that's when the plane encountered battery issues. So I was actually still in college, finishing up my electrical engineering degree when this happened. And then um, because the plane flew day and night and only used the energy from the sun, the team had to wait for a while, um, about 10 months, I believe, in Hawaii for the days to be longer than the nights, um, just to make sure that the plane had enough time to charge up during the day, so then it could use um, the batteries during the night. But it, it was um, it was crazy though to think that this project was just starting whenever I was finishing up my degree, and then I had the opportunity to come on for that second half. Yeah, how did it feel to come straight out of college, and then immediately jump into a project that was just revolutionary? The first uh, solar powered airplane to completely yeah. Yeah, circumnavigate Go around the, globe. the globe. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. things where um, I had decided after graduating that I was going to start working for a material science company called Covestro. And um, a lot of my professors said, Paige, you know, this is different for an electrical engineer. Um, I had previously done an internship with the company and loved the culture. I felt it was the perfect fit for me, um, but it was different. I'm glad that I listened to kind of my gut feeling and accepted this full-time job because Covestro was a material science partner and donated a lot of the material technology to the airplane. And that's how I was able then to work on the airplane. Um, you know, if I would have done exactly what every other electrical engineer thinks they need to do and move to Silicon Valley and just work in a specific sector of tech that is um, really, booming right now, I might have not had this opportunity, um, you know, with Solar Impulse. And the last thing I'll say really quick is having this experience so early in my career, it made me take a step back and realize I set these internal boundaries for what I think I can accomplish. And I don't know why, but with this project, I realized, you know, everything's limitless. You know, I don't have to place boundaries on what I could accomplish or when I could accomplish it. It's, you know, just take opportunities and I don't know, live them to the fullest. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout your journey, uh, who would you say, or did you have someone who, uh, not, maybe not someone you knew personally, but uh, someone who inspired you uh, to, I don't know, uh, sign up to join the uh, solar impulse project? Hmm, that is a good question. Um, I don't know if I could say one specific person, but I think um, it was really before doing that project, as I mentioned before, having that support system. I guess I didn't realize how important it was to surround myself with people that say, you can do it. Um, because I think if I you know, if I didn't do that, people might have said, you know, Paige, maybe you shouldn't apply for this project. Um, but, you know, everybody around me said, do it, do it, do it. So I think um, 
one thing, you know, a lot of times, even through my engineering schooling, I remember people would say, um, my classmates would even say, oh, you know, when our classes get hard, I don't think you're going to be able to be involved in this design team. Or, you know, this class is really hard. I don't know if we're going to have time to um, join a club. But instead of listening to those people that said, you know, I'm not sure if you can do all of this, I, you know, instead of saying even watch me I just said okay I'll go find people that believe in me right so I think um, you know and when you surround yourself with those people you can do more and more and more and I'm excited to see you know how that will affect the rest of my career now uh, okay um, so throughout your school did you, did you say you were involved in a lot of um... yeah so um, I'm, I'm, I feel like I don't necessarily fit sometimes that box that a lot of people like to put engineers in. Um, and I always tell people, not even just students or kids, I tell people that you should really just follow your passions. So if you have, um, so for example, for me, I've been a scuba diver for 12 years. And so at Virginia Tech, I attended some scuba diving meetings because I thought, you know, this is a piece of who I am and I want to, um, you know, I don't want to lose that because I feel like I have to be just an engineer. So I was involved in a lot of different things. I um, did design teams. I was involved in some other social organizations, but I felt it helped me leave um, Virginia Tech where I studied as such a well-rounded engineer. Yeah, uh, so would you say that um, your experience in uh, those different clubs in university and maybe even grade school, uh, did that really help you work with um, the people in the Solar Impulse Project? Yeah, so kind of the, this is a little bit goofy, but um, the job for Solar Impulse, um, they wanted somebody that was an electrical engineer that had a bit of background in public relations and could communicate with people at, um, at days where we had the public come in and see the airplane. And then they also, um, the team mainly spoke French. So those are things that are so different, I think for other electrical engineering jobs. But when I looked at my resume relations for one of the organizations I was a part of, so check mark, um, I studied electrical engineer, another check and I took some business French classes in college because I had studied it growing up. So random list of things for this project, but because I just followed my passions and, you know, did something a little different than the typical engineer, I was perfectly qualified for the job. Mm, yeah. As you were saying earlier uh, that uh, the team was mostly French speaking, uh, am I right in saying that you were the only uh, American ground crew member? How was that? How did, how did that uh, work with everyone being from different nationalities? It was um, definitely a great experience. So I had traveled a lot growing up, um, but I never really had an opportunity to work with people from a different culture. Um, and I realized how, um, you know, even small cultural differences can sometimes make um, problem solving a little different. So it was, um, I encourage a lot of people to reach out to people from other cultures, work in different cultures, just because you learn so much so quickly. Um, I just recently finished up a master's program at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And my entire class besides me was actually international student. We were trying to solve a problem but I couldn't understand quick enough in French or couldn't vocalize my opinions. Um, I sometimes wish people would just slow down or ask me questions or you know give me a chance and being on the other side of that at Carnegie Mellon if I had teammates where English was their second language I would not think oh they're not interested in being a part of this or they don't have good ideas I would just ask them directly. Um, hmm. So I think that's a um, you know, I think that's always good advice whenever you're working with someone from a different culture is just, you know, reach out to them directly, speak to them slowly. They have great ideas and they want to share it. And 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's something that uh, a lot of us, I'm saying us because me too, I struggle with this. Um, I'm often too nervous to ask questions. So would you say that you should just be direct and always ask people questions to make sure it's clear, to make sure there's no future misunderstandings? Yeah, I, um, I definitely think so. And I think um, even myself, so I remember, um, like you were saying, scared of asking questions. I remember growing up, there would be times where even if I was asked a question by a teacher or if I was at an event and someone said, hey, does anyone know the answer? I would be 99% sure I knew the answer, but I would be scared to raise my hand and get it wrong. Um, and then I realized, you know, after so many times where I actually knew the answer, I realized, okay, Paige, stop being scared. Just put your hand up, answer the question. And once you even have the experience of being wrong a couple times, you realize, you know, everything's still fine. You know, you can be wrong a couple times and it's liberating. So <laughs> yeah, it's really not that bad to be wrong sometimes. Anyway, um, uh, how would you say, uh, that, or sorry, uh, what, what specific part of the solar impulse uh, did you work on uh, throughout the project? Yeah, so um, solar impulse had been a project going on for, um, I think, a little bit over a decade. So when I was able to join the project, um, a lot of the main systems in the airplane were um, good to go. And I was as a member of the ground crew, I took care of a lot of, um, I don't know if the right word is accessories that came along with the airplane, but one thing was we had this mobile hangar. So the airplane is this massive airplane. And when we didn't have a place to store it big enough, we had to, as the ground crew, we had to inflate a um, igloo-like structure over the airplane. So there were four electrical engineers that would be responsible for the power systems, making sure this stayed a lot, working with the other electrical engineers on how to um, make sure the power systems were in check and we didn't have any problems where the hangar would then collapse on the airplane. Um, when we were in Dayton, Ohio, there was a bit of a scare where since we encapsulated the airplane, um, if the if the power sources turned off, the airplane would be crushed by this hangar, um, which is kind of scary, right? To know these stakes whenever you're, you know, right out of college. Um, but I just remembered I did a lot of different things where I was YouTubing how to, you know, how to hook up this power system and how to troubleshoot a power system because um, I didn't want anything that I could have potentially you know, I didn't want to be responsible for an issue with the airplane. So, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a long answer, but. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, so to actually build on that, um, how, how did you personally go about uh, tackling small problems that you had uh, throughout the project? Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about Solar Impulse um, was that no one had ever done it before. So just coming out of college, there were no correct answers that my you know, when you're in school, there's a correct answer your teacher can give you, or if it's in the back of the textbook, you can know if you're right or wrong. But with Solar Impulse, we had no idea because we were writing the textbook. Um, I think one of the things I was really glad about um, when I was studying at Virginia Tech and even studying um, in my middle school and high school years, um, I didn't just focus on solving one problem. I learned the process of problem solving. So I didn't learn how to build one type of circuit or write one type of program. It's just that whole process of breaking a big problem down into smaller components that you could then apply some sort of experience you've had to solving. I know that might've just sounded confusing, but even though these problems of solar impulse seemed huge, um, if I broke them down into smaller components, it made it a little less intimidating because it reminded me of other problems I had solved. No, actually, that, that makes sense actually, uh, to compare to something I'm currently dealing with since I'm in grade school. Um, I know that when I was younger, I used to think it was stupid. I, I knew how to sound, uh, solve a certain math problem, uh, yet the teachers would keep giving me slightly different versions of it. And... Uh, I didn't understand why, but now now I've slowly learned that 
it's actually important to know how to solve it, not just know the answer to it. Yeah, and so one of the things too, I remember, you know, when you're trying to do something quickly, you can say, okay, well, this, this is the process of how to do it. I don't need to really know why. You know, if there's a little cheat that you can use to get the job done quickly, you're, you're just, okay, I'm done. But I realized that I really had to start asking why and learning why I was doing certain different, um, you know, processes when I was solving a problem. And even though it took a little bit longer to understand the process behind it, I think it helped me in the long run because I understood the bigger picture of what I was doing. I know that's probably hard to think about, but who knows, maybe in a couple of years you could be um, solving these big engineering problems. Yeah, it, it does. It, it is a little bit difficult uh, to think about when you're young because um, you're just in grade school. There aren't really big, big problems that nothing you do really affects uh, affects like a big project, like uh, an airplane that you're about to see physically flying through the sky above you. You can't grasp it like that. But uh, I think what you're saying still does apply to us. That's important to know why, not just how. Mm -hmm. And if if you wanted the viewers to uh, remember one thing uh, <laughs> that you'd say here, uh, what would that be? I think I would say. Um... Definitely follow your passions and don't try to do things just because you think it's what you should be doing. Um, do things for the reasons that make sense to yourself. So um, I know growing up, I used to, or I had friends that would say, oh, well, this class in middle school is an easy A, um, so I'm going to take that. And I always kind of took the different type of courses. I took things like woodshop because I thought woodshop would be really cool. Um, so I would say, yeah, follow your passions and don't waste any opportunities to learn something new. You know, it's, you don't want to spend a, um, a whole semester or a year learning about something just to get a good grade. Spend something that can help you further those passions. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I would like to thank our guest here. Uh, Paige Castellan uh, for joining us today and I would like uh, you booters to remember to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook if you have those. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank bye. you so much. Um, thank you. <laughs> You've been a very good guest. <laughs>